Hey, what's up? Welcome to the video. Today we're talking about my Lexus GX470 and it's stage one budget build progress. So I got I got a Land Cruiser back a while ago on a, a budget. We're talking about a 2006 Land Cruiser and a 2007 uh, Lexus. Pretty, you know, pretty old, 300,000 miles on one, 160,000 miles on the Lexus. And what I wanted to do was kind of build up, build up these older vehicles with high mileage and just see how capable they still are and be able to use them on adventure trips. So in today's video, I'm going to show you what I've done up to this point on the Lexus. And it's a pretty, pretty big transformation. Um, what I'm calling this stage one, I don't know if there's going to be a stage two. Honestly, it's adventure ready right now. Stage two might be like the, the details, maybe more interior details and uh, possibly bumpers. I could get to that, but uh, front bumper, rear bumper, it got run into, somebody backed into it and dented it. And also I wanna be able to carry my spare tire, but that's a pretty big outlay of money kind of going past the budget portion. So that may come down the line. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some still images of before and after. I'm gonna show you some still images of the suspension, the wheels and tires, some of the little interior mods that I've done to it so far. Then we're gonna take it out. We're gonna do a little bit of uh, desert off-roading and then I get up into the mountains. I've got some snow footage. I've also got, it, this was like four or five different times taking it out. I did take it out for an initial, you know, and you get, I, I've got that recorded where I kind of give my initial feelings of everything. But then I went back out, it was snowing. I went back out, it was super foggy, really fun. So stick around, you might enjoy it. Maybe the maybe if you're looking for something like a 4Runner, Tacoma, or Land Cruiser, one of these older type vehicles, you get some ideas about what you can do to these, what transformation they look like, and just how capable they are once you put just a few mods on there. So here it is. There's the before picture. Bone stock, worn out suspension, worn out tires, beat up wheels. Yeah, definitely needed a change. Still have the running board. Here it is after. So we got wheels and tires, suspension lift, went with a two and three quarter inch lift on the front and a two inch lift on the back. And the reason is the natural rake is already at about an inch and a half higher in the back. So I went, I went three quarters of an inch higher on the front just to take some of that rake out. And I think it looks pretty good. Took off the running boards, Suspension lift, wheels and tires. Now with the tires, I went with the same tires I put on the Land Cruiser 100 series. I think they look pretty good. They work really good on there. So on the Lexus, they're the Falcon AT3Ws in 255-8017. And that's a 33 inch tall tire. They're about 10 inches wide. So they're a little skinnier, but they're not too skinny. And man, do they grip and they ride beautiful. These are those TRD wheels you've seen. We've got these off eBay for a great price. So Falcon AT3Ws, 255, 80, 17, 33 inch tall tire on the TRD wheels. Now the front suspension, again, this is a 2.75 inch lift. It's the max you can go on these Bilstein 6112s. So the 6112 is the two and a half inch uh, body shock over the the 5100s. Those are kind of the the industry standard that a lot of people go with. I wanted a little bit bigger diameter. You get about a 2.3 inch piston, and the overall shock diameter is about 2.65, somewhere in there. So you get a lot more oil moving through there. Put a KYB top mount on there. That's because mine was all kind of worn out and beat up, and the threads were rusty. So you got to get a top mount for it. You can use the OEM one. And again, I put this on the on the highest ring that you could put it, which is supposed to be, according to them, 2.75 inch lift max. And then I went with the Nitro Gear upper control arms. These are the upper control arms that I wanted for the Land Cruiser. So I haven't gotten those. So I figured I'm going to get them. If they work good on here, then that's great. They're going to work good on the Land Cruiser. Finally, the last thing up front, I used a trail gear front diff drop spacer kit just to help 
realign those CV joints and they're, they're sitting pretty level. So it's looking pretty good. Really inexpensive little spacer kit for that. Moving on to the rear. So in the rear, I had to remove the factory airbags. It had airbags instead of coils. So remove those, remove the associated fuses with that. And I have no issues there. Replaced them with Icon uh, 158506, which are two inch lift springs. So the two inch in the back, 2.75 in front. They're still about, I don't know, an inch, three quarters of an inch to an inch of rake on the car. It's not too bad. Uh, the, the rear shocks are like the Bilstein 5160s with the remote reservoir. So those are pretty cool. They're small, smaller than the front. They seem to be doing a pretty good job. I used the Metal Tech uh, coilover conversion kit, which gave me the low, lower coil retainer, the upper coil retainer, as well as the OEM um, rubber bump stop that goes inside the coil. So just a few of the little interior things I've done, nothing big. I got some of that Amazon vinyl wrap and I wrapped the ugly looking wood, did it here on the driver's side. And then on the passenger side, right above the glove box, you can see that it's black versus what's on the door is that ugly fake wood color. I also removed the saggy net that sits on the back door and replaced it with this metal uh, molly panel. Also installed the Victory 4x4 molly panel, the window panels. So if I have something stacked in there, they won't bang into the windows. Also, you can hang stuff like you can see I had a first aid kit, fire extinguisher on the back. And finally, on the roof, uh, Rego Fab out of Texas makes these crossbars to where you don't, have, if you're not going to put that much stuff up there, you don't need to get a roof rack. I got these to try them out. Possibly could mount a small awning on here, maybe put some traction boards up there. Today on Cars with Chris, we're going to find out if the Lexus GX470 is a mall crawl and grocery getter, or is it a suitable adventure vehicle for off-road and overlanding? I'm going to put it through its paces today and find out. So I just pulled off onto the dirt for the first time with this new setup. And what I want to do is I'll talk a little bit about its on-road characteristics and we'll get a first impression of what it feels like off-road. This should be interesting. So I went ahead and got it all in four-wheel drive, got the center diff locked. Want to get the, the whole feel of, of what's going on. Now in this, in this particular ride, you know, the only thing I have to really compare it to for four-wheel drives is my Jeep. And in the Jeep, Honestly, I usually drive around a two-wheel drive around here. There's not a lot of tough stuff. I mean, the snow and some ruts and things, but two-wheel drive and then four, four high. Rarely do I ever go into four low, but recently after getting these vehicles, I've been using four low a lot more, especially on rough roads like this. It's just easier on the drivetrain, you know, it's, you're not, it's not shifting. It's kind of always in the power band. Everything works good. But with this, I find that four low on a lot of these roads is perfect. It's really good. I'm able to cruise again. You know, we're not, we're not some kind of off-road desert racer in this thing, but four low center diff locked. It works pretty good. So let's get to how I feel so far about the on-road characteristics. So just so you know this, I'm on a road, it's got ruts that run across and got a little hill here with some ruts. Smooth as silk. Last weekend, I did a lot of heavy off-roading in the Jeep, in the snow, in the clay, over rocks, really fun. But already I could tell you it's night and day difference. The comfort level sitting here driving this than the Jeep, you know, the Jeep, it has a kind of a mind of its own with its long travel suspension. So on road, it's night and day difference in this. You gotta remember what I'm comparing it to is 15 year old stock suspension that was completely worn out. It had airbags in the rear for, for its uh, like instead of coils, that's what this came with. And I'm sure the shocks were all blown out. They were just standard shocks. I felt like I might even touch bump stops on the road if, if there was like a kind of a bad place in the road, I hit it too fast. So with the new suspension, it feels obviously more firm, not stiff, but firm, more of a sporty feel 
like you would feel the difference between kind of a regular truck or SUV and maybe more of a little bit like a sport sporty car not a full-on sports car but more sporty something firm I'm up in the forested mountains now and it's a little muddy I'm on a pretty steep uh, downhill here and I'm testing the downhill uh, descent control so what I've just found and that's why I wanted to, to let you guys know is in this vehicle it's using the like the traction control system because I can hear it applying the brakes if you ever heard a traction control system go off it's pretty loud it sounds like a big clunking but it's actually applying brakes to whatever wheel needs to be done so I'll see if it can let you guys hear this hear that so it, it it sounds like some like something's broken right so I turn off hill descent control put the the uh, automatic transmission into low gear I'm in low in the transfer case now low gear let off the brakes I am cruising it's not even registering any miles per hour it's at 800 900 rpm and i'm just slowly going down the hill so if you want to go a little faster go over into second gear I'm letting the it's like the diesel guys do you know you let the it's engine braking right so now in second gear i'm doing five miles an hour i'm doing five miles an hour at just over a thousand rpm and it's i'm not touching the brakes so the thing about going down long, steep grades, you don't want to ride the brakes. You don't want to have to ride the brakes all the whole way. So downhill, the descent control system is utilizing your brakes. And it's utilizing your, I'm gonna go back into drive, because we hit the bottom of the hill. So I would much rather put the transfer case in low range and depending on how steep the hill is, either low, which is first, or second gear, second gear low in the uh, in the automatic transmission. Because right there, you could see I rolled about 10 feet, and you could hear it go brrr, ka, brrr. It was just making all the traction control sounds, which means not only am I working the brakes like I normally would if I was riding them with my foot, but you're also heating up your your traction control system, right? So I would definitely recommend using the engine braking.
looking around for some uh, hill climbs now. I know there's one, uh, it's about a mile and a half off to my left. I'm gonna go try and make my way over there. Hard to film anything on it other than this camera angle you see now, but it's it's pretty steep, requires low range gears, and it's, it's fairly long, and it's got a couple of, uh, not ruts, but trees in the middle of it. So let's go see if we can find that guy. Oh, look at this, here's a little track right here. Go through a little tight area here and work our way down into a low point, a creek bed. And then we're gonna come up a pretty pretty good hill. It's a good test for a four-wheel drive system. And it might be actually a little, little soupy since there's still snow down in here and we got some rain last night. And it's this hill is always in the shadows. So we're gonna find out here. We're working our way down this little goat path here and that's the bottom of the creek where the snow is and just around the corner we're gonna go straight back uphill this is about the best camera I can get for you it's such a tight area and ain't no way I'm walking down <laughs> walking this hill but we're we're in the creek bed now going over the rocks and if you can see it just goes up to the left there pretty steep and yes it is a little bit soupy so I'll keep quiet. Maybe you can hear what the car is gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it in, in uh, drive, let the transmission do the work, but uh, here we go. Okay, so I left my window open and I got some mud in here. Wow, what a great day. So I know there wasn't a whole lot of footage today, but really I am I wanted to put it through its paces a little bit and make sure it's adventure ready, right? Because that's what I want to start doing. Enough of this little couple little things. I want to get out. Right now I've made my way back up to where I cooked my steak the last time, the last video. I'm right in that same spot. And right down there is where I got the Jeep stuck a few videos ago. All the snow's gone from here, but on the other side, there's still, still a little patchiness going on. So up here in the mountains, it's, ooh, it's about 12 degrees cooler than it was down in the desert earlier. Down the desert, it got up to 70 degrees, but the, the, winds, the wind was blowing pretty good. So a little bit hard to film, but trust me when I say that I did a fair amount today off-roading. I really, I really been waiting to make this video. This has been a long time coming. I actually ordered this suspension um, early December. And as today, it's like March 4th or 5th or something. I think it's March 5th today. So it, it took a little while for the parts to get here and then to get everything done. And then I had to... I had to wait another week for the tires to get shipped in because it's weird. I mean, normally those are in stock. They're, they're just the Falcon all-terrains. But everything came together. I'm real happy with the suspension. I, I like the way it feels. On-road, it's perfect. Off-road, it feels really good. So now the next thing is to load it up with the uh, fire pit and some other goodies, add a little weight to it, go off probably take a couple hour trip make some lunch and see how it likes that but as of right now I'm extremely happy with it rain last night so I've, I've had some soft some mud just a just a little bit of snow just actually it doesn't really count for the snow but as far as everything else goes it worked really good I'm extremely happy so hopefully I was able to cover everything in this video um, as far as what I put on it the little roof thing, I've got some ideas and plans for that in the future. But it's 
And I got a couple things going inside already, like I said. Hopefully I showed you all this because, a little background, I recorded stuff a few weeks ago. I recorded some stuff a month ago when I was doing that. Then it snowed. There's a lot's going on going into this video, and it turns out to be a very small video. But that's okay because enough testing, really. I just want, I needed to make sure that it was going to be capable, that I wouldn't go pretty far and then either get stuck or, or not be able to do some tracks that I want to do and get back into some areas that are super fun. So I think that we're good to go. Like I said, enough testing, time to get adventuring with this thing. Anyway, that's going to do it for me, you guys. Extremely excited, happy, ready to go take this thing out and adventure. Be seeing, now we're going to have a couple different vehicles that we're able to uh, go out and adventure in on the channel, you know. So if you, if you like Jeeps, there's something for you. If you like Toyotas, I got the Land Cruiser. If you like Toyota Lexus, I got this thing. And if you're a truck person, we got the Raptor. And I love taking that thing out, man. That thing's a beast. Actually, I have it loaded up with all my targets and stuff. That's my primary vehicle when I go out to the desert to do a little desert planking, if you know what I'm saying. A lot of fun. It works really good for that. Anyway, that's going to do it for me. You guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Maybe got some information. You guys got any questions about uh, maybe these uh, 470s? Let me know. I've done a lot of research. I'm still a noob with it, but I always try to continue to learn. Thanks for watching.